So I remember following along with Ponies for a few years and then generally lost track of the show sometime around 2014. You gotta understand, I had cooler, more epic things to do at the time, like watching anime and pretending I understood Homestuck. You know, stuff all the cool adolescents liked at the time. But I remember how much of a big deal it was to hear later on that the Cutie Mark Crusaders finally got their marks. There's something almost sentimental about hearing that they'd finally made it. It's like hearing that a kid that you used to babysit graduated high school, except more stupid. You, in the back, I hear you ask. Who are the Cutie Mark Crusaders? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Cutie Mark Crusaders were the kid sisters of the main cast in My Little Pony. Their character arc revolves around a quest to find their cutie marks, the butt stamp that damns you to a lifetime of whatever your special talent is. Sorry, McDonald's pony. But their marks ended up being somewhat controversial, something that can't really be avoided after building hype for something for so long, as everyone ends up having their own expectations. But what they ended up with? Missed the mark. For those of you who are new, hi, I'm Jane. I like to draw. And today, I thought it would be fun to explore what the Cutie Mark Crusaders' alternative stake stamps would be if God did not frown upon them. But first, a few quick things. I turned your favorites into glue! That's right. Now your precious sparkly ponies have been sent to the farm upstate, freshly bottled and ready for huffing. These 1.5 inch pins turned out so cute! Available individually for you and your bestie to match, or for my collector friends as a set. Friendship is the glue that binds us. Or something. That and so much more on my shop, linked below. Have you ever found yourself thinking, Wow, I wish there was a subscription where I could receive a new sticker design monthly? Well, wonder no more. With the Sticker Club, you'll receive a brand new sticker on a monthly basis. That and my Patreon will be linked below as well. Oh, and one more announcement. I'm happy to share that I will be a community guest at Ponyville Cider Fest this year, and will be hosting my own panel. I'll also be co-running a panel with the amazing Sophie Scruggs. Come by and say hi! Now, let's get into it. I was recently in the comments section of somebody's Instagram post and ended up having a little combo with somebody about the implications of the Cutie Mark Crusaders' drab life sentences. The three of them earning their marks together is cute in theory, but once you think about it a little longer, it's kind of an existential nightmare. The marks they got represent their club. The club they formed to find their marks. Their marks mean that their club is now what they'll be stuck with forever. The marks indicate lack of any purpose outside of helping others discover their talents which essentially makes their initial goal of finding their own marks and individuality a Sisyphusian task. This is horrifying. Now, you can argue that teachers help other people find their purposes, or parents help their children find theirs, but, but even then, Cheerily had gardening for God's sake and Mr. and Mrs. Cake have their desserts. Imagine if their cutie marks were a graded paper or a baby bassinet. Now, a large portion of My Little Pony is dedicated just to the mechanics of their destiny stickers, and a lot of the Cutie Mark Crusaders episodes revolve around them solving problems related to that. I think about that one time they helped a kid whose mark was a skull and bones, and the parents were scared of them before finding out that their talent was paleontology. This, like, implies that there are serial killer ponies walking around that got their mark in, like, horse leather furniture making or something. Honestly, I could go at length about how being branded with your destiny early on in your life has weird existential problems that come with it, like how Twilight seemed to be anointed by her stake sticker to an existence where she watches her friends grow old and die around her, and like, are they predestined, or are there certain outcomes where they could have gotten different ones? And if they are predestined, how is that decided? Who's making that decision? Is there a pony god? <laughs> All of these questions and more because of cutie marks. Is it possible to get the wrong cutie mark? Is it possible to get a cutie mark that isn't necessarily wrong but would lead to a less fulfilling life than a different one? I don't know. Anyways, to get back on track, I guess this bothers me so much because the other ponies marks are so tied to their identities that to make this little summer after school club into their whole personhood forever is just 
so sad. <laughs> I also have beef because the cutie marks they worked so hard to receive are only very loosely related to the talents that they were set up to have. Now, I understand that the shield design element kind of pays homage to the capes that they wore in the beginning. It's supposed to look like their club badges, and that's cute! But in execution, it just plain does not look good on them. Very small and very samey. And to have them all match each other robs them of their individuality, which I felt would have been more satisfying to see in the end, you know, if they all had their own marks. Now, since this is my playground, and this is my channel where I get to do whatever I want, welcome to my headcanon zone. I'm fixing these horses. Now, disclaimer, as always, I mean no disrespect to those who worked on the show, or even those who wrote this into existence. At the end of the day, they're fictional horses, and I don't want to dunk on others' art. I also heard that there was, like, meddling from higher-ups at Hasbro, so that's probably a factor. However, comma, I'm a tyrant, and I will be replacing their stamps. Just know that it's all in the spirit of fun. Let's start with Apple Bloom. Since the early days of the fandom, it was always a joke about how Apple Bloom would have to have an apple cutie mark. Jokes about what her life would be like if her mark was a pear, etc. It's even brought up in her introduction episode where she figures as much. So, obviously, we aren't going to stray too far from this theme. Now, I never found Apple Bloom to be the strongest character in the show, as I feel her only discernible traits are younger sister, uh, maybe some determination, and maybe a sprinkling of leadership. Um, Apple Bloom is also established to have an artistic eye. When cleaning their treehouse, she goes above and beyond into making it their home. Similarly to how Cheerilee's mark represents her students blooming, I felt the bloom in her name goes hand in hand with her arc blossoming into her own. I had two different ideas for this mark, so I ended up just doing both. What's this? I hear a cry from the back of the audience. Three flowers? An apple and some flowers? That's boring as hell! To which I say, look at the main six and show me a mark that isn't simple. What I'm aiming for is what would look show accurate, you know? Um, and a lot of Pony's marks are actually really, really simple. <laughs> like, three elements at most. And I think that's another thing that bothers me with the canon marks that they ended up having. Like, we've got a shield, an apple, and a heart inside the apple. That's just, that's so much. There's so much going on there. There's like stripes on the shield. There's so much! And yet, it's so boring at the same time. I would get more about her as a character if she just had the little flowers on her side, like, come on. For Scootaloo, I wanted to draw from her original cutie mark. That's right, she was in G3, and then they zapped her with the minor ray. Yes, originally she had a butterfly. Quick aside, this isn't important to anything, but the first time I saw Scootaloo, I thought that she was Fluttershy's younger sister, because I just, I thought that her colors were like Fluttershy, but like put in a fryer, you know what I'm saying? So I also thought that the butterfly was like, oh, they're gonna be sisters. But then I watched the show and they weren't related, so. Anyways, Scootaloo admires Rainbow Dash, right? So I imagined her arc as a character would involve recognizing that she is just as amazing herself. This is where the butterfly comes in, a symbol of transformation, self-actualization, growth, and a tattoo of choice for women everywhere. That, and I didn't want to draw a scooter because it would be ugly. I wanted this mark to be similar to Dash's, of course, so if you squint, it's kind of that. But I made the line of action an S, so we've got Scootaloo in there secretly. Whoa, S for Scoot. Whoa, whoa, brain blast. That's so cool. Sweetie Belle. The only, the only notes I have in this section are Sweetie's talent is singing and songwriting and a bell with a pink ribbon and music note. That's all I have written for this section. Um, and I think that's probably fine. I think that's probably enough information. We, we all get the idea. I do have two different variations for her mark. One is just the bell and the bow and the other has the music notes. Personally, I prefer it without the music notes. I feel like it's just an easier read that way, but the music notes are there because why not? Why not? And now for the big reveal. Boom! 
Yay! We're back to the good timeline. All is well. So, what do you guys think? What would you have done differently? Tell me in the comments. I wanted to keep it as congruent with the rest of the ponies' marks as possible, but I'm curious to know if our head cannons are the same or not. If you liked this video, please leave a like, share with a friend, it helps so much, thank you, and check out my Pony Zone playlist. Um, I've got a lot more horse content um, if you're hungry for that. I've got a series where I turned the main six into villain versions of themselves. That was pretty fun. Um, I drew them as dragons at one point. A lot of fun stuff in there, so be sure to check that out. Alright, thank you for watching. Bye!